So this is my first time looking at the garden after not being here for about 12 days and you'll see the tremendous growth. I thought I'd take you along and you can experience what I am. But you can see the coxcomb. This is, was a volunteer and they're all over by my kitchenette bed, tucked in the back as well. That one is wilting and there's a lot of pollinators here. The marshmallow has grown taller. Wow. And the milkweed has really filled in so beautifully here. I was trying to plant as much as I could here so I could see out of my window while having any meals. And the beans here, this is mung bean. There's more that have formed. These will dry and I, I just shelled some yesterday. And this is a uh, probably a ball hide or I think it's a ball hide bean, which I planted intentionally here to trellis over the sunflowers. Excuse my shadow. And this is uh, the sweet potato vine. I had stuck extra over here and this is a very good sign. I'm so excited. I see a flower so I can tell that the tubers are forming and it's very happy in this uh, area. So I'll have to remember that for next year. And this is a uh, sunflower right here. The coneflower is looking great. This I bought from a local grocery store. And uh, it's uh, taken off. And check out the mulberry. Oh my gosh. That has grown at least two or three feet from the last time I saw it. At the bottom here, is bell pepper and one has already formed. I think this is the most success I've had with bell pepper and it's in a totally different spot. I've always put it in my raised beds and this time I thought let me just uh, plant it in the ground and there's more over here as well. Isn't that beautiful? The Swiss chard is uh, perpetual so it will keep producing and I can just harvest the outer leaves and I've done this about five, six times already and shared quite a bit. Oh, and I have more peppers back here. I had actually planted a whole lot of seeds, I believe in this, in that spot. And then the one I had transplanted, some of them. And these are the ones that I transplanted and this one too. And check this out, there's a bell pepper there too. So I'm going to I'll cross my fingers that I will get some uh, bell peppers. And I, before I left, I late August, I had planted some uh, peas and you can see that they have come out here. I was in such a rush to get things in just so that I wouldn't miss the window of having these actually produce some peas. Also there's beets back there. Really don't know what variety. Hopefully I have my notes updated with what I had planted here, but you can tell that there's peas in four spots or six spots all together. And then the beets in the back. So it'll be filled up really nicely in the fall. And then this is also a type of uh, spinach or chard, excuse me. And the Malabar spinach has become very, very happy here. I mean, I have so much. I'm probably going to saute that up with salt, pepper, olive oil, and enjoy it a, at least a few more times. And you can tell that the seed pods are starting to form. And I will never have to plant this again because they just come up as volunteers. And I'll probably be sharing a lot of seeds you can tell that the flowers also here have formed. And I, this is again the ball hide. At this time, I'd like to welcome you to my channel, Lady Green Thumb 2. The date this video was taken was September 
the 13th, and this will be the update for September 2022. I unfortunately lost all the voice recording up until this point due to technical difficulties of learning the nuances of a new wireless mic. What you see here is the formation of the loofah gourd and at this time you can harvest the loofah while it is young and it tastes just like squash. You can tell that the vines are attaching to whatever they can get a hold of to climb. At the foot of the bed you can see that they are uh, two plants of coxcomb and they are wilting since it's been so hot this month. And at the base to the left of the coxcomb, I started seeds of carrots. And I've been thinning them out as I get a chance to. Along with uh, the carrots, I planted up a row of peas so that it can climb up the trellis so that it has support. The okra in the back there has grown to uh, more than a foot tall. You can see the eggplant is also forming. I've harvested uh, two or three rounds of it already and shared some as well. There is some disease on the leaves, so I will be thinning uh, things around it out so that there's more airflow and the okra is continuing to produce. At the base of the okra I had planted out ginger root and they are actually looking very good. They are in several spots there And there is also turmeric, which has a larger leaf structure. Here you can see okra. This is the pink tongue from Baker Creek. And I had left uh, pods on this stem because I have no more seeds left. So I'm letting it dry on the stem for harvesting seed. Just so that I don't forget that I want to save this part for seed saving, I tied a rope around the stem. Moving to the other side of the bed, you can see clearly here that this is the turmeric plant. And the remnants of a watermelon that most likely got eaten by mice or rats. I was very disappointed to come home to see that. And then the Swiss chard here is doing great in some shade cover. Along with the uh, eggplant on this side, which again needs airflow on this uh, section as well. It looks like the mice or rats have also gotten to the leaves of the sweet potato since I see remnants of leaves on the ground there. So again, I was quite disappointed that they are so hungry that they are trying to get to whatever they can that is edible. This here is the yam, which is a, a purple color, and it's doing really good in this pot. You can see that the stem is quite nice and thick, and uh, this is a different type of yam. Um, the actual stem has ridges in it, which is a very unusual um, characteristic. In this grow pot, you will find carrots that was sown, which I am still thinning out. Next to it are sweet potato vines with the beautiful purple flowers. 
which are very similar to morning glory. Even the leaves are about the same shape. In the back pots here is on the left lima beans and there are a few baby pods that have formed. Next to it are bell pepper plants that were transplanted from the kitchenette bed and there's flowers that have been forming so I'll be getting peppers pretty soon from these plants as well. Moving over to the perimeter of the raised beds, this is the cucumber that I've harvested quite a few cucumbers from, but now the plants are looking like they're diseased and I will most likely be pulling that out. Wow, looking at the tremendous growth here in the original raised beds. I'm walking through the pigeon peas here and there's so many flowers that have formed along with all the peppers that are coming in. This really looks to be so lush and beautiful. There are so many peppers that have formed that the weight of these long peppers are folding over on top of the shishito peppers. This is the cayenne pepper on the top and then the shishito peppers at the bottom. And there's just so many peppers. I'll be sauteing some up for sure and sharing with friends and family. And over on this side, I have poblano peppers that have come to fruit. And they're on the smaller side, but I'm sure that they will be delicious, sauteed or cut up in salads. The Thai chili here have been turning a nice vibrant red and I will be harvesting those for drying again. Um, I believe I mentioned it in several of my past uh, monthly videos that I'll be making a hot chili oil with uh, these peppers. And then what I am showing you here are the Anaheim peppers. They have been so prolific and coming to grow at a great size to be well enjoyed. And here are the cayenne peppers on uh, the other side, as well as in the middle where some of them had been leaning over onto the shishito peppers. And they're all over in this middle section as well. This bed here truly is a forest of peppers. Over in the next bed, which I call bed number three, is the pigeon peas, the very tall plants there with the yellow flowers. 
they have provided quite a nice canopy for everything underneath, including the peppers that are at the bottom. And they are forming at a very slow rate because of the canopy. I believe they are the similar type of pepper as the one in the previous bed. And they are still having some of the buds and very little peppers, tiny peppers that are forming. Moving on to the corner of this bed is sweet alyssum and it has very pretty little flowers along with holy basil here that I'm picking disease leaves from also known as Tulsi. This here is the tomato plant that is trying to reach for sunlight due to the overgrown pigeon pea plant and it's looking very good I'm hoping that I get some type of harvest, but it has several branches that are forming and possible pods of flowers for tomatoes forming. In this area here, I have started uh, seeds of onions, about two or three varieties. And because I was out of town, I had to I decided to put them under my drip hose so they would get water, but it was uh, a little too much water and I'm pretty sure that uh, this will not grow as well, but uh, I'll give it a chance just in case. And in the back here too are seeds of, uh, additional seeds of onion. At the base of the bed here are volunteer tomato plants that most likely came from the compost from tomatoes that decomposed from uh, previous years and then also starts of collards or greens for fall crop and then a line of peas that I'm hoping will trellis up. In this corner here are two cucumber starts and I will go ahead and cut one of them to allow the other to produce good sized cucumbers. Over in raised bed number four I have brown cherry and here is what the inside looks like and it's a cross between a tomato and cherry and has a very distinct flavor. It has taken up quite a bit of space in this bed. As you can see that the regular tomatoes are trying to reach over the ground cherry to get as much sunlight. At the base of this bed are kale, and beetroot starts, and they're looking very good. The Genovese basil and the opal basil is looking so beautiful in this bed. And I will be cutting these to dry and making a basil blend to use in the winter and into spring. Tucked in the middle of the bed here is starts of cabbage and cauliflower that I had started in the same manner as the onions and I had to remove the excess water as well from this pot.
Here is the Thai basil that has grown to a nice bushy habit and I would likely be donating this to a local restaurant. The tomatoes here are very happy and have really grown to a good height with many flowers on them since the shade cloth has provided much needed shade. In this corner here are the succession plantings of beetroot and they're looking very good. In the top left corner there and the middle of the bed I had started seeds of carrots and also in the middle there is the culantro that is similar to cilantro or coriander And the licorice basil has been providing a great canopy for the carrots. Moving on to the next raised bed, which I call bed number two, is the forest of okra. There are two types there, which is the purple or burgundy okra and a regular green okra. Also here are cosmos. These are the seashell and they actually look like seashells when you look at the flower. Below the canopy of okra are starts or seedlings of cool weather crops. Since it is still very hot, I had planted them so that they would be provided the needed shade to thrive and make it through once the okra was ready to be harvested. In the middle of the bed there are carrots along with uh, peas that was started and then also daikon radish on the right. Differences between the burgundy okra and the regular okra can clearly be seen with the burgundy color through the veins of the leaves as well as the stems. In this case here you can see that the stem is green and that of the burgundy in the back is burgundy. It looks like I'll be getting okra pretty soon, at least from the burgundy variety, since I see the flower pods forming. I'm checking here to see if the regular okra has also flower pods, and it looks like that will be forming a little later. The orange and red flowers here are milkweed since I like to have pollinators close by in my garden. They attract bees and monarch butterflies. This here is a squash and it's a volunteer meaning I did not plant this as well as a tomato which I will probably pull out so that uh, the peas have a chance of uh, growing up the trellis there. You can see that the peas have been planted around most of the stalks of the okra. 
Oh, I just got distracted here and I noticed that the beets I had growing in bed number one have wilted and died and I'm just checking the soil here for moisture and it was uh, very dry and brittle so I had decided at this point that uh, I would water the beds in well. These are the golden beets that I had planted, I believe, at the same time as the red beets that have wilted and died. And these seem to be doing okay, but taking a very long time to bulb up. You can see that the bulbs are pretty small, so the water will definitely help it. I'm glad that these leaves are at least green. As I walk out of my forest of green, I'm going to move on and show you the okra, which is looking really nice and tall here. This is a variety that was provided to me by my sister, and there's also ones that were planted that are shorter there in the back. And then the archway here is looking very beautiful along with the mulberry tree and all the sunflowers. Moving on to the apple bed, the Turk's cap is looking so beautiful with the red flowers and I've been seeing hummingbirds on and off along with the milkweed and sage or lavender, the lemongrass I've harvested multiple times and shared with family and friends. I'll be cleaning this bed up along with several of the others since there's a lot of things that are spent. Here you can see the yellow rose is blooming. And in the back there is loofah that is growing up the support there onto the fence line. The banana trees here are looking so beautiful. The one I'm passing right now was actually taken from this area here at the beginning of the season since I had a palm tree initially in the first spot that had died with the cold freeze we had two years ago or so. Here you can see the moringa and it has grown taller and I plan to harvest the leaves for drying and putting in shakes. At the base they are peppers and then lemongrass as well that I have been cutting to make it look uh, appealing in the pot along with uh, this pot as well. There's a pepper in there and then another perennial. The taro type leaves here have grown so nice and big and these are edible. And in all the pots I have planted ginger. Although ginger has been planted in all the pots, they're at various stages of growth due to the number of plants that are in each pot, the amount of water that it can retain once it gets watered and how big the pot is. Here it is at a very small stage of growth. And then in this pot here, it's quite a bit bigger. This is the fig bed and looks like the figs are dormant or the tree is dormant at this stage because it's been so hot. I believe I'll get an another round once it cools down a little bit. Since I like to propagate whatever I can, I have started 
one of the fig tree by placing a pot with two slits on either end at the base and then putting a branch in once I removed some of the leaves and I will see if this will root in the pot since it has the soil at the bottom and a weight on top to keep the branch in place. Hi, I thought I'd take a break and do a little bit of a change up just to give you a little bit of a different scene. The video will continue on here and um, hopefully you can read the notes or the little notations I have at the uh, bottom of the video. I wanted to talk about three reasons why I started a YouTube channel. Um, the first one is because I wanted to document my journey of gardening and also what I have done with whatever I've harvested, how I'm enjoying everything. And the second reason is that I really wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to go outside of the box of what I'm used to doing in my career. I was always behind a desk and I've always enjoyed as a hobby gardening. I did not feel so comfortable talking to a group of people and I thought this would at least challenge me to learn to do so, if not for anybody else, but really for myself. The third reason that I created this channel was to inspire anyone I can because I so enjoy it and I see so many benefits mentally, physically, and emotionally by just being outside or even doing seed starting indoors. I'd like to give a shout out to Jill at Whispering Willow Farm because she has been one of the channels that I have watched for at least a year or two. And she did address why someone should start a YouTube channel and she, she had it spot on. I, I wish if anyone looking to document their journey like me. It's just for my personal reason. I'm not looking for anything positive or negative out of this channel. It's really just for me. I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you in future videos.